Hello, Alan here with Firewalls.com. In this video, we will walk through deploying your Sophos XG firewall for the first time using the wizard. Now, this isn't the ideal way to deploy a firewall, and I'm not typically a fan of using the wizards, as it creates a lot of unknown items, which are oftentimes difficult to locate, and uneditable, which can be a configuration nightmare for those of you coming from Sonicwall may have experienced this. But we realize it's quick and easy, and we've been fielding quite a bit of questions, thus bringing forth this video. So here we go, let's go ahead and get started. Now, assuming you have completed the initial registration and activation portion, and the firewall is powered on, and you are connected to the port labeled as LAN on your XG firewall, we can begin. This is a little bit different from the SG, because the XG now has a built-in DHCP server, making the initial connection a little easier because it saves us a step. We no longer have to go in and mess with our local area connection, uh, just make sure that we're set to DHCP and we'll pull an IP address. Note that the new XG web user interface is accessed on 172.16.16.16, which is a little different than our SG boxes. So, to access the web admin console, we'll open up a web browser and navigate to the IP address of the appliance 172.16.16.16 using either an unsecured connection over HTTP on port 80 or a secured connection using HTTPS on port 4444, which I always recommend doing. Go ahead and bypass any certificate errors to proceed to the web app. Now here, at the welcome screen, we can now log in using the default credentials. The default username and password are both admin for all newly installed XG devices. Log in. So now here, once we've logged in, we can see we've reached our network configuration wizard. We'll now go ahead and step through the process. Please note that if you wish, you can choose to cancel the wizard and configure the device manually, which is typically what I would recommend. But for the sake of this video, we'll go ahead and start our wizard. And to start our configuration, we'll select our deployment mode that we'll be using, which we can see here we have our options of either uh, bridge mode or gateway mode. By default, the appliance is always in gateway mode. And we will leave this in gateway mode if we are using the Sophos XG firewall as a VPN concentrator, if we have multiple WAN links, which also includes PPPoE, or if we're configuring two devices in a high availability cluster or if we are replacing your gateway with the Sophos XG firewall. And we will select bridge mode if the existing gateway does not have to be replaced. Bridge mode provides you the ideal solution for networks that already have an existing firewall or router acting as a gateway and where you do not want to replace the firewall but still wish to add additional security utilizing the Sophos's XG deep packet inspection, intrusion prevention system, gateway antivirus and anti-spam services. Bridge mode also supports STP. So by adding the Sophos XG firewall in bridge mode, we do not have to remove the existing firewall to take advantage of the added security features provided by the new appliance. The Sophos XG firewall will act as a transparent bridge between the existing network and existing firewall. And because gateway mode is typically the most common type of deployment we'll be dealing with, especially in our business class environments, uh, we'll go ahead and proceed with continuing with the gateway mode. Go ahead and select next here. Now we are ready to configure our ports. We can configure the IP address, subnet, and zone for each of the ports listed. The IP address can either be statically assigned or obtained from DHCP or PPPoE. So in this example here and in our test environment that we'll be using throughout our, our video series, um, we'll go ahead and just give this uh, the 10.10.1.1 we'll be using throughout our examples. We'll leave this in our WAC24 subnet and in our LAN zone. We'll go ahead and select our ETH1 interface now, which will be used for our WAN, which again we'll select a static IP address. We'll enter in our information here provided by your ISP. In this example here we have our AT&T connection, 4047.189. Should be assigned to our WAN zone. Here we can go ahead and give this a name. This is our AT&T WAN, followed by our gateway address. Go ahead and select next here. Or alternatively, if you've got additional zones or networks that need to be configured, uh, we can certainly do that within these options here. Just make sure that we are selecting the appropriate zone. 
this example here, we'll just go ahead and configure this pretty basic with LAN and a WAN. Go ahead and select next. And here we can enter in our DNS servers. As we can see, the Sophos XG appliance allows us to configure up to three DNS servers, or we can alternatively select to obtain them from DHCP. And also note that here we will only be able to select to obtain them from a PPPoE if the IP address is also being obtained from a PPPoE, which kind of makes sense there. Here we'll just go ahead and enter in our DNS server IP. And we'll just go ahead and throw in a Google DNS as well. Then obviously if you have a backup DNS server or an alternative DNS server that you're using, uh, you'll want to enter in the, that information here. Let's go ahead and select next. And here we'll configure a default user network policy. So this will be our default policy that the Sophos XG firewall will use, and we can certainly modify this later. Um, all this is demonstrated in separate videos. So in this example here, we'll just go ahead and select our option to enable the user network rule. And here we could select our web filter option here, which as we can see, the Sophos XG firewall comes uh, pre-built with a number of categories. In this example here, we'll just go ahead and select our default workplace policy. This is actually a fairly well-built policy. And we won't select anything for our application filter, uh, but here you can see that we have the option to uh, allow all, deny all, or just don't select anything. Uh, in this example, we just will leave that non-populated. And for our IPS, again, we can see that we have a number of pre-built policies offered to us by the Sophos XG. And of course, this can also be edited later, but just keep in mind that at this point, you won't really be sure what these policies entail. So selecting uh, one of these policies kind of in the blind may not be ideal for you, which kind of again goes back to the reason why I'm not too big of a fan of using our wizards here. So in this example here, I'm just going to select none. Next, we can configure the settings for our email notifications. As we can see, the Sophos actually firewall needs to be configured with the mail server and email address to send the notification emails to. These include notifications of changes in the gateway status or VPNs. So in this example here, we'll go ahead and use our Sophos support at firewalls.com email. We'll give our mail server an IP address of 10.10.1.11. Of course, you can just make this up as long as it's in the same subnet of the LAN interface or ETH0 interface that we configured earlier. We'll leave the port set to the default, 25 for SMTP traffic, and we can say that this is coming from our Sophos XG at firewalls.com. Then we also have the ability to enable authentication. If this is required, just go ahead and enter in your username and password, and also enable connection security for start TLS or SSL TLS select next here. Next we'll go ahead and set the date and time for our NTP configuration. We'll need to specify the time zone, time and date on the date and time configuration screen. And we also have the option that we can select to automatically synchronize the appliance with an NTP server. I'm in America, Indiana. So the Indianapolis time zone here. And next. And here we can review a summary of our configuration and also the option to send application and threat data back to Sophos Labs, which we'll go ahead and just leave enabled. And select Finish, which we can kind of get an idea of um, what the wizard is, is going to configure for us. Go ahead and select OK. And just go ahead and bypass your certificate errors. And this will bring up our web admin here. And that is it. That is how you deploy the Sophos XG firewall here using our network configuration wizard. I hope this video was helpful, and we appreciate you watching. Take care.